It's very rare on a food tour that every dish just hits right. Ah! I'm gonna eat a snail. <laughs> owners and the people working were super friendly. Such great people. I can't say that enough here in Morocco. He's thrown for the loop with the spleen and the liver today. These are amazing. Now that hits the spot. Look how crispy it is. You are my favorite place to go. Welcome back to Morocco and welcome to Marrakesh. Today we're going to be eating our way through the city on a Marrakesh street food tour. We've partnered up with a chef's tour and we're heading towards the Medina to go meet up with our guide right now. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Pleasure, man. So the Medina of Marrakesh goes back to 1062. So the walls over there, that's the rampart or the protection, nine kilometers long. There are 21 gates that spawn to get in and out of the Medina. So you're gonna try one interesting local pancake that we call Baghre. He's buying the pancakes from here and then we're gonna take it to another shop for like to put some toppings on it, I think. Those are good, yeah. Very good. Shukran. If it's correctly done, it dredges with the holes on the top. Hence, sometimes people they would call it pancake with thousand holes. With the topping, it matches perfectly. So we get we call it amlo. Mainly uh, three ingredients: argan oil, honey, and the nuts. Mainly almonds or peanuts. I love how it has all of these little holes, and then the filling just <laughs> seeps yeah, out yeah, of it. Yeah, just, just, Mm. Wow, great start. Yogurt and granola is like a staple for my breakfast. This is the best yogurt I've had in a long time. I wish we could buy this in the store because this is amazing. So much flavor. Not overly sweet. That's so, so good. So if you want to buy fresh yogurt here in Marrakesh, when you walk by these little shops, you just look for the glass bottle or like a jar and then you can buy the homemade yogurt. And it's worth it. You should get it. This was wonderful. It wasn't thick, you know, it was just very creamy and very flavorful. Really good. <laughs> but try to tuck it in. Oh, okay. That it becomes a bit, bit uh, fluffy with small Wait, peanuts. Yeah. We're taking phyllo dough and then we're putting the peanut paste in it and wrapping it up to make a little pastry. Oh, I feel like I'm messing up. Yeah, you just need to tuck it. It's all correct. Okay. Oh my gosh. See? See, the, the difference is just like one yeah. year low. The difference is this is perfect and one's not. <laughs> Look how cute it is. Wow. So what's this one called again? Shubakia. 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 And it's in the shape of a rose. He sprinkled sesame seeds and rose water on top of it. And it's the phyllo dough and wow, look how sugary and sweet it looks. This is great. That's so delicious. Dessert already. I like that in the food tour. Of course, to make this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I saw you ate one of those. Yes. You always eat one of those, yes. right? Oh. Yes. We know they're like, like freshly made. Oh, so how can you not? Wow, that's so delicious, man. That's like the cow spit. Uh, the really? filling, yes. The filling would be the mixed beef with the vegetables. Mainly carrot, potato, onion. And then it's served as a snack, mainly inside the loaf of bread. Oh, God. Yes, so it's called desert spleen. This is spleen mixed with minced beef mixed with vegetables. Come try it with me. I'm, I'm kind of nervous. No, that is good. Okay. All right. It tastes like ground hamburger, but a little more bitter. Yeah. The taste That's after taste is. is bitterness. The spice is really great, though. You can tell that there's beef in it too. It looks a little skeptical, but it smells really good. I love it. Mm. Very heavily spiced. The meat's really tender though. And the bread is always amazing here. Hot. Mm. Really 
Mm -hmm. What did you think, Deb? I liked it. It was uh, some really different spice flavors that I'm not used to, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. We're going inside the local bakery. They don't like a lot of cameras, so we're just going to keep it on us, but we're going to go see how they make the bread. Look how quick he is, too. Our guide said they can put 300 to 500 loaves of bread at a time. It's crazy. They can do a lot. So we came to dry these sardine sandwiches, so he just stuffed the baked sardines in this fresh-made bread and squeezed a little bit of lemon on top. I was really nervous that we were going to be eating a lot of the same foods that we've been eating on our trip, but so far everything has been very unique, which I'm excited about. It's simple food, but it's really, really good. You can really like enjoy the taste of the sardines, and then cook it right in here. That was my favorite so far, the saltiness and with the fresh lemon. Oh, That was a special shop. I couldn't film a lot of the inside, but the baker let me show him. The oven was so humongous. What a special tour so far, so unique. We were just talking about the weather, and he was saying he was cold, he zipped up his jacket. And I'm currently sweating in a t-shirt and shorts. It's amazing the different climates when you travel, what people are used to. Your summers must be very hot, huh? Yeah. I love how the tour has been like hands-on, like the rolling of the pastries was so fun. And then he says like, you know, when they form the relationship with the bread people, then like eventually you'll be able to help like make the bread. So fun. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. you, Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a Five bits of the hammer and uh, you can touch it. It's still warm, and you can see it's. Black from the bottom because yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I turned other people's tongue here. Why not make it? Um, <laughs> yeah. So, what was the meat that he's using here? I use uh, goat meat. No, oh, nice. That's why I'm invited in. <laughs> so, the really nice gentleman cooking the tangier let me try his. It was made out of goat, and he said most people don't really like it, but he was loving it. Our guide was eating it. And he gave me a little bite, and oh my gosh, it's so delicious. Reminds me of lamb. He said it has a little kick, but I thought it was awesome. We just walked down the street that sells all the leather goods, and I was like, ooh, this leather has a smell because it has a very distinct smell. And he was like, that's how you know it's the authentic, genuine leather, is if it has the smell. Goat skin. Oh. You shave, you sip of water, you stress. You make the drum top. Okay. Love the sound, that's cool. We just walked down the street where there was a lot of like people making shoes and I was asking our guide if that's they sell these shoes on the next street over where the tourists are buying them and he said yes and no. Sometimes you risk like buying imported shoes over there, but if you come straight to the maker then you know you're shopping local. So And supporting small, and supporting small businesses. Which is cool. I just thought you would be interested in this. He's making genuine leather balls. Oh really? Sports. Wow, look how cool they are. Now that's a souvenir I would love to bring home. I believe there were $70 for it. You could see him hand stitching it. What an awesome shop. So we're at our next stop. We're going to be trying lentils, white beans, chicken skewers, and liver skewers. Was, I don't know. There was, some, there was something different there at the end. I'm not quite sure what it is. Just put a drizzle of olive oil and a little chili pepper on top. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have our two skewers here. We did the chicken with turmeric and coriander or cilantro. And then this one is going to be the beef liver with no seasonings. But he says when you take a bite, take some with the liver and a little bit of fat because the liver tends to be dry. So I'm going to go for liver first because that's the one I'm most nervous about. So he's throwing me for the loop with the spleen and the liver today. Have we ever had liver before? I don't think no. I have. That is really good. I'm surprised. You like it, wow. Well, I was, ner I was nervous. <laughs> Not much of an organ person. <laughs> and this one has turmeric and coriander. Mm. That one's really, really good. Yum. Mm. That's, that's a hot one, but I like it. It's good. My mouth is <laughs> on fire. Everybody's been raving about the liver, which is really surprising. They said you have to have the fat. It perfectly balances out. Let's try it out. Wow, you guys are right. That is so delicious. Who would have thought we're loving liver? How do you say delicious? We say it is ween. Is ween. Is ween. Is ween. <laughs> These are like the two typical starters you get with a normal Moroccan meal. You get the white beans and the lentils. And we already know that I love beans. <laughs> and I love these for sure. We've had them oh, a lot and I love them. Mm -hmm. the, the liver was surprisingly um, kind of hard for me to even try. I probably haven't tasted liver for over 60 years when your parents made you eat some, but um, this was very good. We're not a liver family, as you can tell, but that was fantastic with the fat mixed with it. Made it salty and tastes like just really good beef. I loved it. Well, that was a great stop. The owners and the people working were super friendly. Such great people. I can't say that enough here in Morocco. <laughs> this is one of the places where you could try finest Arabic tagine in the Medina. Hey so we're having a rabbit tagine, which is very new for us, and it's one of the only original places left that still makes a rabbit tagine. The main owner downstairs is showing us it was the top 10 places to eat here in Marrakesh. So I'm uh, very excited to try this out. It is so tender and delicious. I love all the spices they have. Another very special dish. We've had a lot of tagine, and I've always tried to figure out which one I like the best, the lamb or the beef. Um, I don't have to worry anymore, because the rabbit wins. <laughs> the broth is so amazing, spiced perfectly. Oh, I could eat this all every day. Wow. I just wanted to eat rabbit because all the books I'm reading, they're all out in the woods cooking rabbit on a fire. <laughs> and it's really point. got me craving some rabbit. You've been craving it for a while. <laughs> I've been like, who's gonna, we're gonna go to the woods and cook a rabbit on the fire. Wow. Lemony, herby. And it kind of tastes like just like dark chicken. Mmm, super moist. That is really good. This rabbit was, tagine was, my favorite meal in Morocco. That's pretty good. That sums it up. Mm -hmm. oh. And I got my, my rabbit fix. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this, one, this one's pretty good. Oh, look how cute you guys are. Awesome. Perfect. Here we come. Here we come. Here we come. Bye. Thank you, guys. Here we come. How is it, Tajin? Best meal in Morocco, yeah. Hey, you wake up. Bye. Bye. Oh, it smells good. Six spices: curcuma, cinnamon, ginger, cardamom, cloves, and anise. I love that smell. Oh, that's oh. nice. Oh my gosh, that smells like the best seasoning mixture ever. Yeah, like mm. Christmas. Medium or strong? Go for it. Medium. 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 Yeah. What's your favorite? Medium or strong? 
Yeah. Uh, strong. Is it strong? Strong. <laughs> <laughs> the reason they have like the sun is like to distribute the heat equally. As they keep moving, so they touch hot sun all the time. <laughs> yeah, you can feel the heat. Once you stir the sugar in, you have to wait a couple of minutes for all the grounds to fall back down. It's really hard to wait. It's always the hardest part about Turkish coffee. It's not like to drink it when it's hot. I'm not very patient. It took them like five minutes to make like each batch. It's gonna be two batches for us all. Mm. Now that hits the spot. After that rabbit meal, just like having old school coffee over the fire, Sammy, it fits in with your theme of your books. <laughs> it's so true. I did not expect Turkish coffee on our Morocco tour, so this is a very pleasant surprise. That coffee hit the spot. Only two dollars to see the whole process and enjoy that Turkish coffee. Wow, look at all the choices of olive. So it's harvest season, so you can see all the different color of olives they have. It's like Moroccan beef jerky. Mm. One of my favorite things, jerky. I believe it's beef jerky, right? Yeah. And they said they use this a lot when they're in the Sahara, of course, because it stays good for up to a year. It's not jerky as I thought. It's kind of more like roast beef a little bit, mixed with a little smoky flavor. Delicious. It's very rare on a food tour that every dish just hits right. Beautiful. Thanks. Thank you. Mm, you want to get a shot of this? Look how crispy it is. Crispy phyllo dough stuffed with cheese. What's better than that? I was surprised. It's stuffed with cheese and noodles. This is the bigger, savorier version of that little cute little pastry we made earlier. I love savory stuff. This is delightful. So the trick is that make sure it doesn't touch your lips. Otherwise, it's gonna leave a mark. Oh my gosh! To so take the whole thing. Yum. Oh. <laughs> These are amazing. <laughs> You've already saved your lips and your tongue and everything. Oh, my. They're so good. Similar to dragon fruit, but even better. So much flavor. Oh my gosh. I love these. Show me your tongue. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you guys. Have a good day. So we're trying the tajir. It's cooked in a different pot than the tajin. This dish is fully from Marrakesh, where the tagine you can find all over Morocco, and this is beef. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. That is so good. Do you like it more than your rabbit? Mm -hmm. Do you? That's saying something. I do like it more than rabbit. <laughs> It's so funny, I asked Rashid, I said, is this the grand finale? He was like, yeah, but we still have a few more stops after this. <laughs> like, okay, come to this food tour, especially hungry. We say that every food tour, but this one has a ton of food on it. Thank you. So that was pretty awesome. It shows how they prepare the lamb tangier. They actually lower an entire lamb down into this pit and they cook it on an open fire for about six hours. And then they lift it up. He showed us a video. I'll try to get it from him, insert it here. I want to come back and eat that now. <laughs> I'm sad, Rashid. What are you doing to me? <laughs> We're trying snails. He's, he's, putting, he's, he's giving me everything today. <laughs> The snails are the escargot, so they are mainly found in the country. The big one exported to France, Italy. You eat them as a delicacy in a fancy restaurant with the butter, where you taste only the flavor of the butter. 
So Moroccan snails usually we use them with the spices. The main interesting ones would be the bay leaf, the skin of the preserved lemon, three type of uh, pepper. So the flavor actually is in the broth, not in the snails. Just anywhere on the top and then the snails would come. So the guts is always the underneath part. Mm -hmm. So this has to go and this fine part of the snail. Let's go for it. You could, uh, try. Ah! I'm gonna eat a snail. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be calm about this. Oh, that actually did pretty good. Yes, but we'll and then it'll we'll take a little. Yes. Yes, yes. Take that off. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. 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 Yeah, just That's... take the part that's Okay, okay. Oh. It's great. It really doesn't taste like much. What does it taste like? The texture is similar to mussel. Yeah, like a mussel. Yes. Okay, yes. I'm like, it tastes like something yes. I know, but I'm not... And then, and then the other flavors... Are here. Okay. Are here. So you sip and then you get the kick of all the spices that were in. Yeah, the broth is delicious. And the texture of the snail is... I'm like, it's familiar. It's like a mussel. Kind of like seafoody, but there's no seafood taste. It's great. Got a cute little one. Perfect. Chewy, salty. The best part is that spicy broth. Mm, so much flavor. Who would have thought? That's cargo, but not the fancy way, that's for sure. Okay, we have the finale. We're gonna have some mint tea overlooking this entire main square, and the sunset's going down, so what perfect timing. This is the place to come for sunset. It is packed up here, and we're just ending our tour with a little mint tea. It's a perfect ending, right? Yeah. like everyone had the exact same idea. It is a little crowded up here. Just a little bit. <laughs> Alright Rishi, thank you for a great My story. pleasure. Yeah, I enjoyed my time. So many fantastic stops, man. A chef's tour Marrakesh and if you guys are interested we'll leave a link in the description box below. <laughs>